Okay, Coleman, you're down here in Atlanta, well, McDonough, mm -hmm. doing some recruiting. You know, you're turning over all the stones, looking for Tar Heels. Yeah. Uh, this event, you've been coming to this event ever since you were kind of like in years, limbo, yeah. right? Yeah. Remember, remember, yeah, you yeah, were the head coach, sure. but we couldn't for announce sure, it. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. So, so now you're here, you're doing recruiting. Um, what do you think of a C3 event when you come here and you're doing recruiting and what are the Tar Heels looking for? Uh, it's, you know, it's an awesome event. It's, it's a way for us to get, um, get in one spot for with a bunch of good kids you know it, it's not us going out individually going to these camps going to these you know tournaments whatever they're they're sort of all here and, and cliff does an awesome job of putting on the workouts you know we're, we're just here to to support and of course us being uh close geographically to to this to georgia you know we need to make sure um that if there there's a kid we want you know we can't just pop in and think we're gonna get the every kid we want you know so you got to be around you got to be you know your face be seen and um, you know, there is a lot of good kids in this area, and we need to make sure that we're maximizing that and giving them an opportunity to, opportunity to prove them at the next level. You know, we have a couple Georgia kids on our team and compound kids, so, um, you know, it's, it's a good time. You know, it's a fun event. When I talk to coaches all across the country, I talk to all levels, all divisions, my biggest thing is how do you recruit? Do you recruit weights, or do you just get the best guys? You were the best guy in Pennsylvania. You went to Oklahoma State. They do a great job of cherry picking from PA. I gotta yeah. say, they do a really good job. They have, and they just get the best guys. Yeah, it's not like we need a thirty-three. We just want the best guys, right? What do you do? What's your philosophy um, on that? I think we get the best guys for us. You know, uh, we look at weights. Um, sometimes, I mean, I, I'm not gonna just. I'm not at a point, or ever, maybe never will be, but to just keep recruiting on top of recruits, on top of recruits. You know, so what I look at is. Um, you know, I want a kid that's it's a good character kid that works his butt off, you know, and I always feel like we can teach skill. We can teach these guys to get better at wrestling. Um, it's hard to teach desire. It's hard to teach heart. You know, it's hard to hard to teach will. That, that stuff is, is inside of you. So, so seeing a kid that just has a little bit of that, has, has that X factor, you know, that's what we really look for, you know, and a kid that fits us. You know, we're a family type program. We're tight knit. Um, I want that. I don't want anybody coming in and buck the system, you know, and, and character's our number one thing um, when we're looking at a kid. If a kid's got bad character, if, if I follow him on social media and it's a bunch of cuss words and all this and that, he's out. You know, um, not saying we don't, we can't change him, but it's it's just a, you know, why don't you limit the risk at the beginning, you know. So, so I think we look for the best kid that fits us, you know, academically a good kid, great character. And, you know, somebody that fits our mold. How quick does it, is it apparent to you that so, if someone is or is not the mold of Coleman Scott in North Carolina? Uh, you can usually tell just by talking to them, by talking to their parents, talking to their coaches, their club coaches, their friends, you know, doing a lot of homework. Um, you know, I, I mean, it's it's really how they present themselves on the map, you know, tells a lot. Um, you know, and I want a kid that competes hard, you know, competes hard and might make a few mistakes, always fix mistakes, but a kid that, that, that goes out there and lays it on the line every single time they step out. You know, uh, but you can tell them pretty quick, you know, just get to know the kid, talk to him, you know, ask him about stuff outside of wrestling, what he does here, what he does, you know, and, and really get to know a kid deep down. Kids are different today. They, they got their faces buried in their phone a lot. Oh, yeah. How do you, is that something where you're like, this kid's into his phone too much, this guy's into the device too much? Is that something where you're factoring in or are kids kids? Um, I don't like it, you know, I, I didn't come from that generation, you know, because I didn't have a cell phone until pretty much college. Um, and, and it wasn't a smartphone till later on and um, you know I mean I've got to keep up with my phone just because they do um, you know but I, I also I tell these kids you know we go on trips and stuff uh, you know I'm not afraid to take all their phones and put them in a bag turn them off and hey you'll get your phone back when we get back on when we're done with the when we're done wrestling uh, because it just limits distractions you know I mean I mean look at the, the the social media what it does to somebody I think it can uh, really hinder a kid's performance just by what they read, what they what they tweet. They need to live up to this. They need to live up to that. You know, they're putting an unneeded pressure on themselves, right? Uh, for what reason? You know, uh, to this day, I don't really have very many original tweets. I mean, <laughs> you know, I look at it and you know, I just it's not me. You know, I'm just more of a old school generation and. I stick to that, you know, but but I don't. I, I, it wouldn't deter me too much, you know, because I can control a little bit of that once you get to school. And uh, of course, you know, academically, if that's that takes care of a lot of it, you know, if you take care, you got to take care of the classroom. 
um, and, and you're not going to do that by playing video games all the time and on your cell phone all the time. And you know, so we see see where you're at there, and, and it really has a relates well to, to what you're doing outside the room. Chapel Hill and UNC is such an easy sell. Like if you're mm -hmm. telling me about it, if I'm if you just get a guy on campus. Mm -hmm. Is it an e Is it like we're gonna get him? Uh, it's not easy. I mean, it depends on who you're recruiting. If you're recruiting number one kid in the country, if you're, I mean, you know, there's times you go up against Penn State, Oklahoma State. You know, it's still not easy. You know, they're they're winning national titles. They're the most historic programs. You know, uh, but yes, the Chapel Hill is beautiful. You know, we got one of the I, I believe one of the best campuses in the country, um, one of the top public schools in the country. Um, you know, and it's a state school, and and it's in geographically, I I believe some of the best weather is in North Carolina. You know, we've got the beach two hours, the mountains three hours. We've got our four seasons with a very mild winter. Uh, I'm not a guy that likes snow, so it's great for me. Um, you know, so getting them there, yeah, that's, it's, it's, once I can get you there, I, I think we have a, a young staff, a great staff, uh, that can really re relate well to, to the kids and show them our, you know, our biggest assets, which is our university.